So, well, hello there, people. It is I, Captain Stephen. Today, chums, I'm going to be giving my first impressions of Kingdoms of Amula. Re-Reckoning. Yes, it's actually one of the free games on the PlayStation Network Yeah, this month. So, I'll be giving you my synopsis of what I think. Does this game captivate me enough within the first hour of play to say, I'm going to carry on playing? Or am I just going to put it down into a pile and say, no, not for me? Well, as it starts out, it looks quite epic. It's got quite a nice little intro section, which is playing behind me at the moment. I'm going to be speeding this footage up and getting into the character creation. Now, what I would say is as you actually fire this game up and you are watching the full motion video, you do feel that it's got a bit of gravitas. It is kind of cool. And you're a fallen warrior inside of a giant battle that somehow rises from the dead. Now, although I'd have sped this bit of footage up in the background here, I'm going to shut up for a second so you can hear some of the dialogue that exchanges between characters. So here we go. What do you think this one is then? Alpha? Goran? Could even be a Jotun? Always a surprise, eh, Goran? Eyes on the job, boy. Don't matter what it is. Dead's dead. And be thankful for that. All we've seen. Go on and pull back the sheet, though. It'll need to be in our report, one way or the other. So I like the way that they worked the actual character customization into that full motion video sequence and at this point you get to create your character. Now there's four races to choose from, the two humanly type looking ones and two elven type looking ones. But then I'm thinking I've just been pushed around by some dwarfs. I would have liked the option to have been a dwarf because it's clearly a freaking race that's in the game. So why not allow you to be a little person? That'd be pretty, pretty sweet. In fact, you don't really get to change the body shape at all of your hero or heroine. No, you have to go by this very sort of stature type looking burly guy or quite a well formed lady. Yeah, so there is no real sort of body morphs going on and the actual options that you got for your facial choices and things like that are good but rather limited with presets to be had. But yes, I do like how all the full motion video sort of works into actual games. So here I am taking control of my character. What do the controls feel like I hear you saying of you at first? Well, they're not too bad. I mean, yes, it does feel that you're sort of motorised at some points. When you enter into a combat sequence, you're kind of locked into combat sequence with each of the different blows, but that's kind of a given. Now, you have got a roll button, but I would say that when you are rolling, you can still be hit, but I kind of like that, that you're not completely invincible like a lot of other games. And there is a basic block function that seems to do the job quite nicely, but against bigger hits, it doesn't quite weather all of the damage until you actually perk up that inside of your skill tree, which the skill trees are quite good, but we'll get to skill trees later. Control-wise, it feels okay, but it feels a bit robotic. It's a bit slippery in places, but it's actually not all that bad control methody wise It's okay. Where it falls down massively, though, is inside of the menus to equip stuff. So you get quite a lot of armor, you get quite a lot of different weapons and things, but when you're looking at the stats, it doesn't really, you, there's no filter option to put the best stuff at the top or something. And you're kind of looking at it, and there's no compare options either. You can't see them next to each other to see what the perks are and things. So it's very hard to understand whether you need to swap it out or keep it. And to go into the menus is a bit... It's a bit fiddly, and you have to go into one menu, into another menu to then equip the stuff. And it's like the weapons exchanging as well. So you do get some stabby stabby daggers for sneak attacks, but you have to equip them first. Well, if I want to be super sneaky, it'd be nice if there was a button just to swap straight to the daggers. Boom! Dead! Yes, now you do get a bow as a secondary weapon, and yeah, when you put it on your back and then you swap to the sword, the bow magically disappears. Same with a giant freaking shield. You get a giant massive shield, and when you... It just disappears into your rectum or something. I don't know. So now the combat sounds, they sound quite nice. They're quite satisfying. And another thing that sounds quite nice is a lot of the dialogue you heard some earlier. But here's some more for your ear holes. Come along. Wait. I've seen you before. On the slab. You... You were dead. Now, I do like the dialogue and the fact that they're surprised by you being alive and they're surprised by your skill and your prowess kind of sort of puts emphasis on your something special. And I really like that about the actual narrative of the game, that you are this sort of special character. 
And in these interactions with some of those characters, when you're talking to them, you get this little, like, little wheel where you've got different options that you can choose from to actually move that narrative path forwards and choose different things. So there's probably replayability here somewhat. Also, later, when we get to the skill trees, you get to choose a different sort of fate. And there's four different fate cards that you can follow on from, or at least there is in the early game. So, yeah, well, anyway, we'll get to that later. But again, there's probably going to be replayability right there inside of this game from, my, well, from what I can see from the off. But what I would say is this whole thing of swapping out the armor is really freaking tedious. So you can see there, some of them give crit chance and some of them blocks damage, but you can't really get the two next to each other in a comparison window. And I feel that that is a massive massive failing upon this actual game and me really wanting to play it but then there's other failings on this game as well of me wanting to play it although that I really like the slick sort of combatty type stuff that's going on it's no dragon's dogma it's sort of stuff that's been done time and time again and probably been done better I mean this is an old game that's been reworked and revisualized but even the visuals are very very dated now it has me sort of reminiscent of Soul Reaver and the way that sometimes you get a special ability where you actually get to see an end cutscene of where you're destroying somebody but I would say that those get a little bit tired after a while too because um, I've only seen a couple and play out but yep yeah, it's kind of satisfying though and when you actually pull those moves off you'll see one later you have to sort of hammer a button to get a load of additional XP I kind of liked it it had an arcadey feel inside of an RPG which you don't get all too often I've only ever had that feeling with Dragon's Dogma so it's doing things right but it's doing so much wrong at the same time that it's it's just not special. It doesn't sort of grab you and say, hey, look at me, I'm freaking special. It just doesn't stand the test of time with modern sort of games. So it has a very arcadey feel to it, which I kind of like, but then kind of don't. It's like you can just go around smashing crates and stuff. Did I find anything useful or worth looting inside those crates? No, I didn't. It just felt like it was smashy, smashy time. And also the bow. The bow, you would expect it to have a bit of dexterity, a bit of skill involved. But no, as soon as you get your bow out, which magically appears from your rectum, you can just twat it against people and it, it sort of auto locks on. It almost feels like it plays the game for you when you swap to bow. And yes, there's no sort of, I, I couldn't find a lock on button for enemies either there probably is and I probably over overlooked it or something but yes when you've got multiple enemies on the screen at once there is a sort of sense of well I want to lock onto that one and focus my attacks there but I couldn't find a lock on button to do that there probably was one but who knows but yeah I mean you get the controls flashing up on the screen all the time and yeah, the, the, the tutorial which I'm in right now which is in this sort of like linear sort of area was kind of fun and it was when you find out like you got the magic abilities the little dwarf that's with you goes oh my days what the heck are you what the heck have we created i mean they brought you back from the dead did they expect you to have magical abilities by the looks of it no no but yes you are this special character and the emphasis is driven there and it does make you feel a little bit special amongst this world of mortals so at this point i just want to recap on the things that i like i like the combat to a degree, when it comes to the sword play and also the dodging, yeah, it wasn't you're not completely invincible. I, I like the blocking, yes, because you're not complete. You know, yeah, you can't harm me. You do take some damage until you buff that skill up, which is quite cool. Um, the things I don't like so much. I don't really like the loot aspect. You know, you kill one person, you get yourself a nice top. You kill the next person, you get some nice trousers. You open the dress, what do you get? A nice boot. So you've got the full ensemble and you've got it from different places, but it's the same armor set right in the same area. It's like, well, I didn't predict that. Freaking did. Yes, no real surprises there. You kind of know what you're going to get before you get it. it. And that's the same with the whole of this game, to be honest. There's nothing new there. And it's very predictable in where it's going to go and how you're going to progress uh, i say that you can see there i got scuppered by a giant cobweb did i work out how to do it it says that i need a staff to burn it so i'm looking around for a freaking torch somewhere to burn it that's on fire i picked up a staff from a dead body but it was just a stick on the ground it didn't look like it had anything to do with freaking fire so yeah it took me a little while to work out that i had to swap my sword out for this cane that i found on the floor earlier that just looked like a walking stick that magically lights up with fire as soon as it's in your hand there you go yeah so now i'm burning through the cobwebs and i'm taking out spiders and i'm using magic and at this point i think you know what i'm gonna play as a mage sort this whole sword stuff i'm gonna be a freaking wizard yes harry potter here i come 
But you know what, I, I didn't feel like I was a super magical mastery wizard, especially when you can't sort of lock on the actual way that you want to hit or line of sight. And there's no sort of beam that shows you where your sort of magic is going to go. It's sort of like aim and hope in a roundabout way. But the aiming isn't too bad because it's very sort of robot in directional sort of prowess. I mean, you're going to see me go up against this troll right now and there's two small enemies with him. And I just want to lock onto the small enemies and take them out first. And uh, yeah, it's, it, you can't really do that, or at least I didn't work out how to do it. I was pressing in the hat stands and pressing all the usual buttons and it didn't sort of snap on. But yeah, it's actually quite good fun. But what I would say, it would be more fun if you could do co-op play. Maybe team up with three of your mates, a party of four or something like that. Because at the moment it feels a little bit empty doing stuff on your own. And there's better games out there RPG-wise that do let you do that and are more fun and more engaging. So for me, one of the that's one of the major letdowns is it's just a solo sort of play. But there's a lot of players out there that love solo experiences. So although that I'm writing this off because it's not what I want, I would strongly suggest you check you check this out because it's it's got something. It's got something about it. A bit like Dragon's Dogma. In fact, if you want to play a really good RPG game. I would say try Dragon's Dogma, not this. Because Dragon's Dogma, at least you've got the pawn method where people can see a character that you've created and there is that little mini exchange. But then that's got its drawbacks too. But this game just doesn't feel as fleshed out as Dragon's Dogma, which is a bit of a shame because it, it's kind of nice in places. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one. So, difficulty with this. Um, I would put this onto casual play, and it was quite a casual sort of affair. I'd imagine if you up the difficulty, he's going to be doing like, you know, three times the amount of damage. And yeah, maybe I would have found that more of a challenge. This is one of those scenes where you, you hammer him and you have to press the buttons to get a load of extra XP, which is quite cool. And I do like the little sort of death scenes that you see, and I'd imagine you're going to see more of those on bosses and things. But on the small enemies, it seems to be very sort of similar in the sort of cutscenes that you see with, you know, finish him sort of move. It's, even, even though it's not this completely different game. But yeah, you get my point. It's a balance and progression with this. So the character sheet in this is very RPG style. You know the whole sort of character sheets where you can appoint, allocate skill sets. Just like that. And I kind of like the skill sheet because it reminds me of those dice rolling RPG days of my youth. Very cool. But then there's also a sub skill skill tree where I couldn't find the basics for magic on there. So I ended up just piling it all into defense and into my shield because I, I, I could see magics further up. But there was no basic level for it, which is a bit of a shite, to be fair. If you want to be an all powerful mage, no, you've got to learn to use a hammer or a freaking sword first. No, I've got a staff right now. I want the skills for a staff. It seemed a bit off. So there's things that aren't quite balanced there correctly, or at least I don't think they are at this sort of stage of play. And then I get this new sort of fate move where I can trigger this new action. You're going to see another little death scene here where I trigger it and then I completely annihilate somebody in a moment. Here you go. I'll let you watch this bit of gameplay. Mortal, <laughs> What are you? The threads of fate. I've seen them before, but I've never seen anyone manipulate them like that. You so again, after you've done this, you know, they're amazed by your prowess. They're amazed by your abilities. And to some degree, I felt slightly amazed by that too. I was like, wow, this actually feels really freaking good. You see what I just did there? But actually, it's just a cutscene and you're just pressing some button interactions. There's not a huge amount of skill to actually trigger that to happen. And it just feels like the game is playing itself at times and you're just along for the ride. But it's still quite fun. So yeah, this game, I like like I say, is free on the PlayStation Network at the moment. If you've got PlayStation Plus, it is free for a couple of months or whatever. So pick it up, have a play. It's a bit of freaking fun. Do I want to continue playing it, though? That's a good freaking question, viewer. Yes. Um, no. 
no, I'm not going to carry on playing it. Um, I come across this little chap, and I thought I could ride him. I thought he might be a steed. No, he had butted me, which hurts, and I thought maybe I'm trying to get on him the wrong way. I will try from the back. So I go around to the back of the creature, to climb on the back of him, and look at this, kicked me in the face. Yes, yes, I couldn't get on him, and he completely seems invincible, but he can kick and headbutt the shite out of me. That's not why I'm not wanting to play it. <laughs> The reason why I'm not wanting to play, I just thought I'd leave that in because it was quite funny. But no, the reason why I'm not really wanting to play this, although that I quite like it and it's a bit of fun, I'm now on PlayStation 5 and I'm on a next-gen console and I want to be delivering my viewers next-gen content. This just isn't it. This just is not a next-gen experience. It's a load of games rehashed and merged into one. If I wasn't a streamer and a content creator and I just wanted a game to pass some time, I would definitely play this for more than what I actually have, invest a little bit more time and interest into it, but because I'm a content creator and bringing stuff to my channel, it's not for me. But I would still score this around about a 7 out of 10 for those wanting to get into an RPG that's just a bit of fun, it's not too serious. But there we go, that's my synopsis. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye again. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit a like and a subscribe. And I'd like to say a massive great big thank you to all of my backers over on Patreon and over on YouTube membership. Thanking you, backers. And if you want to support this channel, just don't skip the adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue. Or yeah, just stay with Captain Steve a little bit longer and hit something on this screen. There's merch here now too.